We're joined by Tom Oates on BadgerBeat.com as we try to break down a very strange Badgers loss to LSU here in Houston. And Oatesy, let's get right to it. Probably more questions than answers at the end of this one. And for three quarters, it looked like everybody had all the right answers. Yeah, they uh, you know jumped to a 24 to seven lead uh, early in the third quarter and looked like they had a very good LSU team down. It looked like a young LSU team. And after that, it started to look like a young Wisconsin team. I, I think several things happened. Uh, their inability to throw the ball uh, really hurt them. I think losing two senior defensive linemen really hurt them. I think they got worn down in the long run. The momentum switched and they, were, and they couldn't change it. Uh, and in the end, we still have many of the same questions about this Badger team now that we had uh, you know, 24 hours ago. Gary Anderson didn't have a lot of answers either, Otsi, in the post-game news conference. I know you guys were up here on deadline, but uh, uh, you know what happened to Melvin Gordon in the second half might be the biggest question to come out of this because it sure didn't seem like an injury prevented him from carrying the football. Yeah, I don't know if they had a, a package they had to throw in there uh, that they had planned to throw in there, and they went away from it in the next series. And sometimes in football, it can happen that you know uh, one play in a series will get away from you and 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 your plans. So for whatever reason, he was out and out too long. Certainly, if there was no physical reason for him to be out, he was out too long, uh, given what a weapon he was in the first. Uh, you know, two plus quarters of this game. So, yeah, that that uh, that's a big question, and I don't know that it's going to be answered right away because of the lateness of this game and the whole media aspect of you know being on people being on deadline and the players trying to rush out and coaches uh, wanting to get home and all those kinds of things. So, I, I think that'll uh, we'll, we'll find out about that. But to me, I, I it looked like coach's decision to me, and that's very curious. The one that he did have an answer for was why Joel Stave didn't play in the second half when they when it looked as though the, the passing game needed to kind of emerge and, and McAvoy was struggling. He felt the offensive line didn't block well enough for anybody, so it didn't matter whether it was Stave or McAvoy. They just weren't getting the play up front that they needed to to, to rally in the end. Well, I'm not so sure that was the case. I'll say this. I do think that having a pocket passer like Stave uh, in, a, in a game like that, especially after they got down in the fourth quarter, uh, and, and if LSU could just tee off on a pocket passer like Stave, I thought that that would have been a, uh, a bad situation for Wisconsin. However, uh, McAvoy could not throw the ball down the field, and they need the ball to be thrown down the field. If they can't, if McAvoy can't throw it down the field any better than that, he's not going to, to help them very much, and they're going to have to think about Stave because. Uh, when you protect Stave, he, he can complete balls down the field. He's shown that. Um, but, uh, again, I, I don't know that it was – I, I mean, I, I thought going in that he would start Stave and then go to the more mobile quarterback if LSU's pressure started getting to Stave. He went the other opposite route, and I don't think he could bring in I, – I, I don't totally disagree with that. I, I thought, you know, if he would have brought in Stave – and those defensive ends from LSU would have pinned their ears back and gone after the quarterback. That could have been ugly as well. Uh, defensively, you almost have to have two different report cards for this game, don't you? Before the injuries and after, because it was two totally different defenses. And, and, and what does the defense look like going forward? Not knowing whether Warren Herring and especially Conrad Zabzetsky, who had to be carted out of here you know, on a stretcher, will be good to go. Yeah, that uh, those were those were tough losses. Maybe the one area of the team where they couldn't afford a loss, uh, very difficult losses, and two really good seniors. And they, they'd done a great job of of holding up the line of scrimmage. The linebackers were very active against the run, and and really had stymied LSU. Now I think there was there, there was going to be a point in that game where LSU's big offensive line started putting the heat on the Badgers and wearing them down, and that's indeed what happened. Um, would that have happened with those two seniors in there? I'm not sure. I don't think I, maybe it, it wouldn't have happened. But all of a sudden, there's the, there were some pretty big holes opened up. I'll let you get on this one. Let's see what's next for the Badgers. I mean, they've got Western Illinois and a very soft schedule going forward, uh, and I'm not sure they'll get the answers they need with with that group of teams. But just walking out of uh, out of Energy Stadium here tonight, what what's what? How do you take this game and 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 learn from it? Well, I love some of the things they did on defense in this game. Uh, and they can still run the ball. We've seen that. 
Uh, they have to get their passing attack going. Now, whether that's uh, the quarterback's fault or, as you suggested, the line's fault or LSU's outstanding cornerbacks merely blanketed the receivers and maybe there was no one open, I don't know. They have to be able to throw the ball down the middle of the field better. Uh, there was they, they, they did not throw the ball down, down uh, the deep balls well. They didn't throw over the middle of the field well. Uh, they, you simply can't exist. Even with a great running attack like they have, you can't exist with a passing game that function that is that dysfunctional. And it, it, uh, it's got to be priority one. And fortunately now they have a few games where they can work on that. Well, OT, thanks for your time tonight. Uh, safe travels back to Madison. And who knows where this season's going. All right, Robert.